everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Kevin's Garage, my ongoing journey as a car building novice to build my Factory 5 Roadster. So uh, this week, a very exciting week, we are installing the uh, Holly Sniper 2 fuel injection system. So quick reminder, I ordered my engine uh, and my tr uh, transmission from Blueprint. I ordered a, uh, a 302 small block and uh, the fuel injection system is the Holly Sniper 2. So when you open the box, what do you get? So this is the, uh, the main harness uh, from the Sniper system, uh, not too bad in terms of complexity. You also get like a little supplemental harness. I'm gonna use one portion of that. Uh, you get an oxygen sensor to go in the exhaust and the little uh, programmable uh, computer that comes along with it. So as well as that, of course, you get the uh, all important uh, instructions. And I've got various other tools and connectors here uh, to help me uh, in this process. So uh, it probably looks more complex than it actually is. So let's just uh, start right at the beginning. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to install the oxygen sensor, uh, which just goes here on the exhaust. It's normally in a pretty standard position, depending on what system you have uh, purchased. Um, it's important that uh, it's, on the, uh, it's on the top, not on the bottom. If you've got a catheter converter like I do, it has to go uh, upstream. Uh, of that can't really be um, uh, on a bend and really needs to be, I think it's something like six to 10 inches from the, uh, where all of the uh, chambers uh, combine. So I think we're in a, a good position here. So let's just uh, tighten that up and then I'll show you where it connects. Okay, so there you can see the, uh, the sensor in place. Then it's just a matter of uh, connecting the wires, keeping it nice and neat. So it's just uh, fortunate I've got the, uh, uh, the wire going to the alternator here, so I can just put it onto there and then just connect it uh, directly uh, with the uh, connector. There you go. Connected that directly to the, to the system. And I'll tidy this up uh, in a little moment because I'm going to put the entire harness uh, on top of the passenger foot box. All right, let's uh, move on to the next piece. Okay, so now it's a matter of connecting the harness. So the good news is there's just really one 16 pin connector. So that's go, that goes there. And then it's a matter of really working out how you want to put this harness as tidily as you possibly can somewhere on the passenger foot box. So I've not quite worked it out yet, but if you can get it, uh, you can get it, get it over here and get it away from the major heat sources. But I'm not going to worry about that too much at the moment. What I'm going to do is to start to uh, get some of the wires where they're supposed to be, and then I can work out how to make the system all tidy. And the first two that you have is these this black and a red wire. Uh, surprisingly or not, this has to go straight to the battery. So uh, obviously some people have them at the front, which is relatively straightforward. Mine is uh, in the trunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect this, put a nice sort of sheath all the way around it, run it underneath the middle of the car, and then uh, connect it uh, at the battery. So I'll show you what that looks like when I've done it but uh, I'm going to run it sort of down here, pick up one of these uh, wires and then run it all the way to the back. So let me do that first. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick look in uh, on Kevin Cam so you can see what we've done. Here you can see, well actually you can't see because it's underneath the uh, the wire loom now, but the, uh, the battery cables, red and black are in here. So it's got some extra uh, heat resistance in here. So it's tucked in nicely and then picked up some other uh, looms there uh, then you can see when it goes down uh, the middle uh, underneath the battery and then uh, pops up on either side so now with the appropriate attachments will fit quite happily uh, onto uh, the bolts uh, with the main cables for the battery all right so that's that piece done let's move on to the next one Okay, so next up we're going to take this yellow wire 
and where this attaches is to the negative side of the coil, which is over on the other side uh, of the engine. So I'll show you that in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, run this yellow wire along here, put it inside a loom, and then attach it to the blue wire and the pink wire and the white wire. The blue and pink we need, the white we don't. But I'm going to take them all through the hole here in a loom and then take them behind the firewall. So then they're all protected and there's no wires coming out here. And then I'll bring them out in another loom and take them down to the general coil area because that's where they'll be needed uh, in a moment. So let me just do that for uh, all of those wires and then I'll come back and show you what that, what that is and then I'll talk you through where I'm attaching the yellow wire, the pink wire uh, and the blue wire, okay? Okay, so let's take a look via Kevin Cam to see what we were able to do. So hopefully you can uh, see inside here. So if you think about it, we had uh, the blue wire, uh, the pink wire, um, we had the white wire, and then we had the yellow wire, which I uh, converted to uh, black. So let's look at the yellow wire first. So here it is, it comes out here and just goes into this uh, loom here and it went down and it went to the left side of the coil. I'll show you that in a moment. The white wire we just capped off the same way we did the dash, just pinched a little bit of um, heat shrink tubing and then wrapped it in some insulating tape. Uh, the pink wire, which was the power that we needed, actually just went in and split this um, uh, coil or EFI wire, the orange wire. So just uh, split the two of those and then the orange wire carries on and goes to the positive uh, side uh, of the coil. And then the final wire was the blue wire, which is here, which basically intercepts this tan wire here. And ignore the, um, the electrical tape, I just put it on because we had a, um, a large uh, heat shrink connector. And these, the walls can get a little bit thin at times, so I just made sure that there's extra insulation there, this one. Uh, I didn't have the same issue with so just to make sure that's all safe and then of course that then goes to the uh, the fuel pump all right so let's just take a quick look around uh, at the coil so we can see what we did over here so uh, here's the coil so we can see this black wire here is actually the yellow wire that uh, came over and then the orange wire you can see uh, just here is on the positive side of the coil. All right, so that's all of the uh, major wires connected. Now we've just got to hook up the uh, little programmable uh, computer and also uh, come down to connect this for the radiator fan and then we're good to go. So let's do that right now. So next up, we're going to install the little um, programmable uh, uh, computer. So we're going to just keep that inside the car and I've just fed the wire uh, through here, the same uh, hole in the firewall. And then you'll see there are actually two connections. There's one on the wiring harness and there's one on the sniper. So obviously there's all sorts of different configurations you can have, but the one that we need today is the one on the sniper. So these are just a, a little, like a four pin arrangement and there's uh, there's only sort of one way that it goes so it's a it's a little fiddly just to to get it in initially there you go and you just tighten that up by hand and we'll sort all of that out later and I'm going to take as I said I'm going to fit mine plenty of lead here I'm going to fit mine under the dash somewhere on the passenger side uh, but obviously you can uh, do whatever you would like. Okay, let's move on to the, uh, the final connection. Okay, so the final one is from this little um, uh, pack of six wires here that can all do various things. So I'm not sure whether 
I'll use them now or in the future. But this wire here, which is either black or black and yellow or black and sort of yellowy green, just need to connect it to this um, all weather six pin connector here. And then that's gonna stay there somewhere. And then what I need to do is I need to find a way to extend this and run this down to the front uh, by the fan. So I think what I'll probably do is um, put another loom on it, a little one, and then sort of run it down the outside so it stays out of the way, similar to what's on the other side, and then meet at the fan connector at the front. So let me just uh, set that up and then I'll show you what it looks like. Right, so let's take a quick look via Kevin Cam as to what we were able to do. So if you recall, this was the bundle of wires that we had. We picked out the uh, black and yellow one here. So we've just protected it and just run it uh, down the side uh, in a, uh, a loom, um, taking it underneath the radiator, a little bit temporary at this point, and then put a uh, connector on it and then attached it here. So that is all good. We've got to tidy it up a little bit, but we can save that for another day. So once I'd uh, fitted the, uh, the final wire to the radiator, all that remained was just to really to tidy up the harness. So you can see here, I've just sort of coiled it as best I could, put some uh, fire resistant tape on it, uh, just secured the two uh, relays here, and then just sort of secured everything where I can still get access to the cables if I need it, but there's nothing pressing or close uh, to the engine and it all is pretty secure. So overall, yes, it's not the most attractive thing in the world, but most of it will be covered by the body. And I think uh, overall it looks absolutely fine. Okay, so I've got a couple of cables here. If you've spotted them, those are just, um, I've got to still fit the windscreen wipers and in New Jersey I need reversing light so this is just an extra uh, power cable to run to the back uh, of the car and I need to ground that as well. All right so I can do that in the future. All right so let's just uh, summarize bring it home and remind us all about uh, those wire connections. So that's it for this week's edition of Kevin's Garage and the great news is is the Sniper 2 fuel injection is connected. And as a novice, I have to say, you know, one or two bits were a little, uh, a little uh, tricky, but uh, overall it was much more straightforward than I anticipated. So I'm very, very uh, pleased with uh, how it's ended up and the outcome. And I'm really looking forward to starting the car in the next couple of weeks or so. But I do think it's worth reinforcing, um, and I've made a little visual aid, what we did from a wiring perspective. So I'll just talk through this again. So the red and black power wires, take them all the way uh, to the battery. That's the first thing we did. The yellow wire, we connected it to the negative terminal on the coil. So the negative terminal is on the left-hand side, that's on the driver's side. Then we took the pink wire and we connected that to the orange wire and that was labeled uh, coil or EFI. But we spliced into that wire, so we kept the orange wire going and that went to the positive side of the coil, which is on the right-hand side. Then we took the blue wire, which is the fuel pump, and we spliced that into uh, the brown wire, which is the fuel pump wire uh, uh, already uh, in the Factory 5 harness, and that is labeled elect fuel pump. And as a result, what we also have to do then is to take out the fuel pump relay. And I've got a little photo that I'll put aside so you can see uh, what that looks like. It's a little uh, 15 amp relay. And then finally, down this side, we took the, um, the black and yellow wire, which was the radiator signal switch, and we attached that to the radiator. So that's what we did. So I think that was pretty straightforward. But I think my approach overall, though, is as well as making sure you get the wiring right, then really think about where you're putting the wiring within the car. Think about you know, keeping it away from the heat of the engine, keeping it as neat as possible, which is why I put mine through the back and use the firewall. There are a hundred different ways that you can wire this up, and it's up to, to you uh, to find the one that works for you, but I was very comfortable with what I ended up with. All right, so uh, 
That's it for, uh, uh, for this week's uh, edition. Hopefully you're still uh, enjoying this novices approach and you're finding it valuable. Uh, next week, what we're going to do is we're going to fit the seats and also we're going to uh, tidy up now uh, the rest of the dash. All right, so as always, if you're enjoying the, uh, enjoying the videos, please like uh, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.